my God, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I do, I do feel welcome. But also for the Austrians in the room, I'm leaving in like three days, so don't worry. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm Roger, nice to meet everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Romanian, just so you know, I'm gonna do the whole set in uh, this accent. <laughs> I'm uh, not gonna do too many geography jokes, but just to kinda, just to kinda get it going, I'm gonna say this about uh, being Romanian. Uh, I, I love it uh, ever since I left Romania. <laughs> I do, I honestly. Right now I think of Romania as like a second world country. <laughs> Because we don't really have a hunger problem, nor do we have an obesity epidemic. <laughs> I feel like we are right where we should be. History is going to remember us as the correct one. <laughs> okay, other than that, I do feel generally, I'm going to say this, that Eastern Europe, uh, we, we, don't, we don't really get credit for, uh, for being culturally diverse. And we are. We're a bunch of countries. <laughs> it's like 15 different countries, like 20 different languages, like three alphabets. Yeah. But somehow, when we speak English, we all sound like Russians. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I live in the UK since I moved to the UK. Oh, I, I've yeah. been, uh, oh, I don't like it. Calm down. <laughs> I just happened to be there, I moved there because I speak English, that's the only reason. <laughs> and I speak English because Americans make good movies. <laughs> Nothing to do with you at all. <laughs> just accidentally, there was this country that speaks English in Europe. <laughs> but, uh, but generally, I feel like, uh, I feel like Eastern Europe. Uh, it's nice. I don't know if Austria is part of Eastern Europe, feels like geographically it is. No, it's not. It's kind of like in the eastern half of Europe. So what the fuck? I don't. I don't really know that much about Austria. Uh, I've only been here like five days in my life. I think. I, well, from what I can suss out, I feel like uh, Austria, Germany. It's kind of like an England, America situation. <laughs> right? You. You are like the initial bullies, <laughs> and then your little cousin took over. <laughs> and left you with a big inferiority complex. <laughs> Somehow makes you vote more right-wing than other countries. <laughs> with, with the exact same GDP. <laughs> like out of all the countries with the exact same GDP, you're the most racist. <laughs> because of the little dick feeling you have in your gut. <laughs> Because of how great your grandparents are and how shitty you are. <laughs> but I feel like just accept that you're shitty, you're just causing problems. <laughs> That's a joke, jokes. Let's move on. <laughs> so basically, I'm a, a, I'm a, I'm Radu. I live, I live in the UK, like Romania. I only moved out of Romania, to be honest, because my, my life was kind of disorganized and I needed a change. I was, uh, I was drinking a lot. <laughs> I, I wasn't an alcoholic or anything because I also did a lot of drugs. <laughs> I, I think that's a good solution to avoid addiction. <laughs> Just do them all. Your body is not gonna know what to get addicted to. <laughs> Just have to keep surprising it. <laughs> my my life was disorganized back home. A couple of, a couple of weeks before moving out, I had like a car crash, which uh, wasn't my fault. I'm a, I'm a good driver, but uh, I did get the bad luck. I did. What happened is I caught a patch of ice, precisely in the moment when I was shit face drunk. <laughs> Right then and there, whenever I drive sober, no ice on the road. <laughs> I'm going to say this uh, for the people in the back. It's a joke, don't worry. <laughs> I feel like sometimes people don't get that I'm kidding. I'm kind of kidding about most of the shit. Except the fact that I don't like the UK. <laughs> and Austria. <laughs> but the car accident, don't worry, that's just a joke. If I'm being honest, I was actually very sober well, when I killed those people. <laughs> don't, don't get too much into the story. 
And, uh, and then when I did, I, I moved to the UK and I started cycling. <laughs> Which I think is fantastic. Cycling is way better than driving. I feel like I still get to be in traffic every day. Only now I also feel like I'm better than other people. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's sort of like being a vegetarian. <laughs> but I also get to eat meat. <laughs> have the best, best of all worlds. So I like it, I like the cycling. I don't like, uh, I don't like the consumerism in the West. I feel like that kind of does bother me. I feel like here they kind of make you buy a shit ton of stuff for like every little activity you do. People buy like walking shoes and then cycling shoes and then running shoes. How fast are you going today? You better not run with the walking shoes. <laughs> Biggest faux pas in the world! You're making an omelet quickly, get your omelet shoes on! <laughs> just walk around the West, just see like shops full of equipment for cycling. That's like the weirdest shit in the world. I don't think we need equipment for cycling. I feel like I have uh, all the gear I need for cycling uh, on me right now. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just missing the bicycle, but I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm uh, not one of those people that wears a helmet. I think helmets are kind of dumb. I think helmets just sort of give you the illusion of safety. And then you make riskier choices. I'd rather oh. just pay attention. Oh. I don't need my brain thinking that my body isn't exposed. I want my brain knowing that my body is exposed. And I can achieve that by exposing my brain. <laughs> I think it makes sense, honestly. That's the, that's the safety rules when I cycle. It's like no, uh, no helmet, uh, no lights either. <laughs> but I believe they can't see me, they can't hit me. <laughs> I, I, I don't need them knowing where I am in traffic. <laughs> I know where I am and I know they don't know where I am. <laughs> I hold all the information. <laughs> Information is power! <laughs> That's it about myself. Uh, comedian, uh, I like to cycle. I wasn't always a comedian when I moved to the UK. I had to have like, a, to have like a, you know, shitty jobs and stuff. Which is good. Nice, nice uh, learning experience. Like I did learn, I had like a minimum wage job and I did kind of learn that people don't really treat uh, minimum wage employees uh, as people. <laughs> I had a name tag. Yeah, I, the name tag isn't there so you can make friends easier. <laughs> it's just sort of there so people can identify you faster in case they don't like you. <laughs> I, I worked in like a, in a parking lot in, in London, I parked people's cars. It was a touristy area, but I actually had people coming up to me, like asking if I could recommend them a good restaurant <laughs> in the area. And I was like, what do you mean a good restaurant? Have you looked at me? <laughs> I, I don't eat in restaurants. <laughs> I can recommend you a really good McDonald's. <laughs> I can show you how to pack an amazing sandwich. <laughs> Honestly, even hated like people asking where could they find cheaper parking. And I'm like, why do you think I would know that? Do you think I work here for fun? <laughs> Do you think I'm like a parking enthusiast? <laughs> On my spare time, I just go park in other structures <laughs> just to see how they do it. <laughs> I don't have a car, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, a comedian. I've been a, I've been a comedian for a long time. I I don't want to say for how long, because uh, I, I should have been more successful. <laughs> The pandemic was, uh, was strange for comedians. That was like a big life change for me. And during the pandemic, I did, I did sort of learn that uh, no matter how much I love doing comedy, I, uh, I kind of love doing nothing more. <laughs> I feel like comedy is fantastic, but nothing is better. <laughs> like, comedy, honestly, is my dream job, but not doing my dream job. <laughs> That's the dream day. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate you, lazy person in the front here.
Mark is Romanian, by the way. <laughs> I, I love doing comedy again. But I think I was doing it wrong before the pandemic. And what I was doing, I was honestly kind of just working hard. I was trying to become a millionaire. And mostly so I could have the year that I've just had. <laughs> I feel like I had a good year. I, I don't really need a million pounds. I just kind of need a doing fuck all all day. <laughs> lockdown brought me that? Yes, more lockdown, please. I'm hoping for more lockdown. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm watching the numbers growing. I don't want to wait for the next disease to get another lockdown. <laughs> I, I want to milk another one from this disease. I don't get me wrong, when they announced the first lockdown, I was scared like everybody else. But then I found out what the world lockdown is like. What's not to like? You just get away, stay at home, do nothing. On top of that, you save people's lives. <laughs> but then, like any other two activities that you can do back to back? <laughs> Better than that, just like resting and being a hero? <laughs> First lockdown scared. Second lockdown when they announced that I, I think that was the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. I still remember the Prime Minister coming on TV and going, stay at home, save lives. I was there on the couch like, I can do that. <laughs> Many lives shall be saved. I'm not getting up, I tell you. <laughs> Comedy is fine. I honestly love doing this right now. Very happy to be here. It's just that I honestly, I was happier uh, an hour ago. <laughs> yes, I like the lockdown. I, ho I hope it's coming back. I look at the numbers growing, I'm hoping. I'm trying to help, I'm doing the best I can. I'm, I'm coughing on stuff. Anyway, every, every day I take the bus for like an hour, I cough there. I show up early at the gig, I cough there. I'm doing my best. I know you guys like, I, I, I see people in, in Austria still wearing masks on public transport. I wear a mask. I know it makes people feel comfortable, so why not? When somebody around me wears a mask, I put one on. I've been wearing the mask. It's just that uh, I haven't been changing the mask. <laughs> that's, that's my Trojan horse right there. <laughs> I've, had, I've had like three masks since the pandemic started. <laughs> The one I have now is the dirtiest thing I own. It really is. At home, I keep it in my shoe. That's how I know I never leave house without it. Unless I leave house with only one shoe. But it did happen. It happened a couple of times. And then I was, uh, I was pretty high. <laughs> to, to be honest, I never knew I could be so happy with only one shoe. <laughs> I sort of always assumed that happiness started the two shoes. <laughs> but no, apparently less is more. <laughs> that's, that's what the pandemic taught me. Do less and you can be happier. Okay, so basically I like the pandemic, it was good. Financially strange. I just got free money from the government. <laughs> oh! I got furloughed. I didn't even know that was a word before I got the free money from the government. It just kind of made me more suspicious in the government. Because I, I don't know where they got that money from. <coughs> January 2020, they weren't acting like they have extra money. And boom, come, come March, extra money. <laughs> Where did it come from? If I'm being honest, I really believe that if it wasn't for the virus, I just kind of think that we would have never found out about that money. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would have just kept it for themselves. <laughs> Before the pandemic, nobody was even talking about a three-day weekend. <laughs> and we had like a year's worth of weekend. <laughs> just back to back. So I feel like, yeah, keep coughing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> keep coughing until the supply chain actually runs out. None of us will work for a year. That's not enough shit out there. 
the bike shop is still open. <laughs> Keep coughing until the bike shop closes down. And then go back to work. That's my plan. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like we just know what's gonna happen if we don't go to back to the pandemic. It, it, it told us on TV. Now the, the recession. Have you heard of the recession? Yeah. I feel like the pandemic is better. <laughs> I really do. What do you want to be at work with no money or at home with money? <laughs> Better, better just keep coughing. <laughs> I don't want the recession to come. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Apparently, it's coming. We, we all owe a lot of money from the pandemic. That's, that's what that's telling us. <laughs> I know who we owe the money to. I thought we were all like on a big timeout. <laughs> But apparently the, the financy people, they were secretly still working. I couldn't do my job, but they can still write invoices. <laughs> they told us that uh, we have a big debt to pay and we can, you kind of need to pay it by, by being sad for the next five years. <laughs> that's, that's how we pay the debt from the pandemic. We're all collectively sad for a couple of years and that, then the debt will have been paid for. I don't want to be sad. I have like five years of youth left in me. I don't want to give it to the recession, I'd rather give it to the pandemic. <laughs> I mean, just let's find out who you owe the money to. Go talk to them. <laughs> I, I don't think we owe the money to like another country with nuclear weapons. <laughs> I think we just owe the money to like 10 people. <laughs> Come on, if it's 10 people... <laughs> Let's just go and kill the ten people. <laughs> why, why the fuck should we all be sad for like ten years? We can just kill like ten people. <laughs> if you're wondering, it's not ethically wrong. If like millions of people want to kill ten people, that's ethically accurate. <laughs> you can go ahead and do it. Them living is ethically wrong. <laughs> Okay, the lazy people in the front. <laughs> and then everybody working in finance in the back. <laughs> I know Austria gets a lot of money from the banking system. I know it's convenient. A lot of money without doing anything. That's honestly who I think are the, the worst people on the planet. <laughs> I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's people working in finances. <laughs> I know, I honestly, I know there's like Putin, I know there's King Jong Un. There's the, the Austrian Chancellor. <laughs> I know they're like homophobes and racists. There are horrible people on the planet. But I think like anybody working in finance, they're worse than that. <laughs> That's my opinion of the world. We just need to get rid of the financy people. <laughs> they're kind of clearly fucking us over, right? It's very obvious. Like their offices are way too nice. <laughs> Anywhere you go in the world, the financy people, they have the nicer offices. How do you know the church was screwing people over 400 years ago? They just had nicer buildings. <laughs> it's not that big of a mess to You gotta tell the business people just kind of suck up too much wealth without really contributing with anything. We always, we always kind of give them special treatment for everywhere, everywhere they go. They get special. Do you know when they go to the airport, they have their own special lounge? There's no like welders lounge in the airport. <laughs> all the welders and the dentists and the doctors, they all they're smooshed together. But I've been doing business all day long. Come on, I'm tired. I'm gonna need a comfy couch. <laughs> Do you not know how hard business is? <laughs> a comfier couch, please. When I'm gonna get on the plane, I'm gonna need more leg room. Because of all the business I've been doing. <laughs> My knees are hurting. <laughs> they, they even have like vocabulary to show when they're fucking us over. <laughs> you know when, when people say business is business? No, nobody says that after doing something nice. <laughs> People they just use it after they've been an asshole and they want to stop feeling like they've been an asshole. I don't know where it goes. That guy is drowning. Don't worry. I'll save you. Business is business. <laughs> <laughs> it's generally those people are drowning. Well, 
Well, we better raise the price of lifeboats. <laughs> <laughs> bestness is bestness. <laughs> Remember to maximize profit. Last nine people in the water, make them auction. <laughs> For the last 20 seats on the boat. <laughs> That's how you maximize profit. You let one of them drown. <laughs> And the other ones are going to see the value of your product. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, uh, that's uh, what I think I need to do. We need to change in the world. Just get rid of the fucking financy banky. I know you guys have like a couple of shitty banks too. I have a bank. I, I work with the bank as well. I, you have to have one. It's mandatory. You're not allowed to keep your own money in the world. It, it, it's really written in the law that you have to give it to a bank. And then uh, between nine and five, you can go and talk to a machine. <laughs> this is the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works now. So I work with uh, I work with HSBC. I'm gonna give them a shout out out of all the shitty banks. Uh, you know the Hong Kong bank. I kind of like them. <laughs> they want me over. They have like a big campaign. I don't know if it's in, if it's in Austria as well. It's all over the place. There's like a, there's a woman on the poster. And it says something like, if an abuser controls your finances, then they control you. <laughs> Pretty good, right? I, I wish all banks would be that honest. <laughs> uh, I know everybody doesn't really like banks, but then I kind of see everybody excited about having a contactless card. <laughs> oh my god, the future is here! I'm saving a second! <laughs> I don't have to count anymore! You know how I'm stupid and I don't like counting? Yeah, I found some honest people. They're gonna do the counting for me. <laughs> I'm like, we need to go back to cash. We need to kind of just delete the mobile banking app. That's the shittiest thing we've done as a society. And by the way, I know it's different. I'm poor. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I know it's different if you're rich. If you're rich, I, I get why you'd like mobile banking. It's like a number there on your phone and it tells you how important you are. <laughs> uh, if you're poor, that number just makes you feel sad. <laughs> Why take that number with you everywhere you go? <laughs> just leave the number at home. What's the fucking pressure? So I feel like you keep it to cash. If I'm being honest, I think like even cash, I think, I think paper notes, we kind of went a bit too far. I think coins. <laughs> That's when the economy was perfect. <laughs> like if you want to have a billion pounds, you need to carry a billion pounds. <laughs> Here you go. Here's your trays full of money. Go be happy. <laughs> it's just harder for Switzerland to launder all that money <laughs> if you actually see the trains going in the country. <laughs> And I know, by the way, I'm gonna say this, I, uh, uh, I'm not like a communist or anything like that. I know. <laughs> I know I have the accent. <laughs> I know you guys don't know any updated information about my accent since the Cold War. <laughs> but no, I'm not a communist. I like capitalism. I, I think it works for uh, people with capital. <laughs> Uh, it's right there in the name. I'm not, I, I just think, I don't really, I'm not a fan of any political system. I think we just need to constantly change between political systems. Because like the, the, the rules are just like a sentence on a fucking piece of paper. It's, people are just smarter than the sentence on a fucking piece of paper. Eventually people just kind of learn to go around it. I feel like that's what's happening now. That's why everything is shit. It's because like this capitalism is kind of stinking up. Too many people learn how to get around it. Too many people are, are looking for passive income. What the fuck is that? No, you contribute to get income. What's with I want to do nothing and I want people to kiss my ass? That's not a, that's not a healthy society. You can you can kind of you can kind of see it. like you can just look at the prices of stuff. You can kind of tell that shit doesn't make sense. Do you guys know how much a chicken costs? This, if you got like a big supermarket, a chicken in the refrigerator, put in a plastic bag, it's like 420. <laughs> Do you guys know how much a big box of Pringles costs? 
420. <laughs> How the fuck is a big box of Pringles at the exact same price as an entire chicken? Staying at, at a hotel, you know how, how much a hotel costs in Vienna for the, for the night? Just to kind of just to kind of not sleep in the street? Maybe like two hundred euros? Fifty chickens? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Chicken needs to be more expensive. <laughs> Chicken, chicken isn't this cheap in Romania, by the way. It's it's, it's way uh, it's way more expensive. But uh, also in Romania, we, we don't have any billionaires. <laughs> we don't. I think I think what's happening is the billionaires just kind of just trying to keep the the chicken around them, <laughs> sort of like very cheap. <laughs> nobody's nobody's gonna go out and kill a billionaire if they can just have an entire chicken instead. <laughs> That's a way better day. <laughs> just, just the bus ride to the billionaire's house. That costs as much as an entire chicken. <laughs> bus ride back, another chicken. <laughs> so basically, I think uh, I like the pandemic, but I like it for poor people. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I think the pandemic was fantastic. I know rich people didn't like the pandemic. They, they had like a good two years where they couldn't go travel. <laughs> that was a tragedy. <laughs> they had like maps at home, they were putting X's on the maps. They couldn't do the X's for like two years. <laughs> I feel like poor people just, just kind of missed work. <laughs> but you want to go back to work? Fuck it, keep coughing. <laughs> and the pandemic honestly just looked to me like a big strike that poor people didn't have to organize. <laughs> Just keep coughing and the world is gonna get better. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but let's try it. <laughs> let's change something before the sadness comes. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I'm basically a big fan of the, of the virus. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I think that's the big, best thing that happened to the planet in a long time. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big uh, uh, fighter of the, of the vaccine. I think that's the worst thing that happened. <laughs> wait, wait. I, know, I, I, I like the I like the virus, so why the fuck would I like the vaccine? <laughs> I think they, they ruined it for poor people. <laughs> I know poor people died too, but like in the same amount as rich people. That's what I gotta love about the virus. That like poor people, they can get rich people sick too. <laughs> Like the world, the way the world usually works, shit only flows downstream. <laughs> now shit is everywhere. <laughs> we finally brought the war to their doorstep. <laughs> and they invented the fucking vaccine. <laughs> so yes, I'm a big uh, anti-vaxxer. Just so you guys know, just so you guys calm down, I'm a, I'm a vaxxed anti-vaxxer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an anti-vaxxer, but I don't really care enough. Kind of, I don't like the vaccine, but I like traveling too. <laughs> Just so you guys, it's not, it's not even like the economical side of it. I have like a, a shit ton of arguments against the vaccine, and uh, we're gonna hear them right now. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my main reason for not liking the vaccine is because I, uh, I don't, I don't like science. <laughs> I, I really don't. I thought about it. I don't respect it as a job. <laughs> what, what I don't like about scientists, I feel like for them in particular, there's no repercussions when they get something wrong. <laughs> Whenever they get something wrong, we just sort of get to say, no, 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 that's just part of the scientific process. <laughs> we are all learning here. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm happy we are all learning. But also, Daniel is dead. <laughs> how, how the fuck is Daniel dead? You're buying a new house. <laughs> uh, that's what I don't respect about scientists. I feel like they're coming up with studies, like, suspiciously quickly. They're constantly going, well, new studies show. Well, yes, but Daniel died from the old study. <laughs> What, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> I, are you sure you're not rushing the study as well? 
you have to put out like a study a week? What the fuck? Just go through it again. <laughs> I know, don't be to shit. Like, I know, like, science is like the best thing we have on the planet, but that doesn't mean that scientists deserve unconditional love. <laughs> if they didn't come out of your vagina, they deserve accountability like everybody else. <laughs> Nobody shits on scientists. You're not allowed to shit on science in 2023. They only accept praises. <laughs> well, fuck it, come on, take the good or the bad. I know, I know, you, you, you made the vaccine, but you also made the virus, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> Where's the big pride in all the fuck ups? I, I see like a meme on the internet all the time where like people, people sort of supporting science, you know the one on the ozone layer? Uh, the, the big hole in the ozone layer in like the 90s? Yeah. yeah. And all the scientists, they came together and they fixed the big hole in the ozone layer? that they created? <laughs> it was a flat earth that's making a hole in the ozone layer. <laughs> it was some dumbass scientists that put lead in refrigerators. <laughs> you can't brag about saving people from drowning if you're the one that pushed them in the water. <laughs> and then management raised the price of life. <laughs> Two people still died. <laughs> but the seven you saved, now you also have their email address. <laughs> Next time you push them in the water, the transaction go by, goes by quicker. <laughs> They're gonna be so happy with the technology evolving. <laughs> but I, I honestly think this is what I think scientists don't understand about the planet. This is stupid too, like nobody really sees outside of this fuck spot. I feel like what scientists don't really get is that science for most of the planet, it's a belief system. Right? You still have to believe it. Because I can't check it. <laughs> I, I don't have a laboratory at home. <laughs> I don't know how to use a laboratory. I can't really afford a laboratory. <laughs> so yeah, science for me is always gonna be a belief system. It's still a fucking popularity contest. Don't pretend like you're above everybody else. And for, for those of you not applauding, I get it, it's hard to compare science to religion. I mean, I know, especially in comedy clubs, it's, it's not good. In comedy clubs, we don't like religion, we've been shitting on religion for a while now. The, the priests, uh, they've been fucking the children. <laughs> they have, and we have been mentioning it. It's the little back and forward we got going. But I honestly feel this is my take on it. I really feel like if, if priests are fucking children, that doesn't mean that scientists aren't fucking children. <laughs> it's not one or the other. If you ask me, I think scientists fuck way more children. Because they're better at disposing of the body. <laughs> Priests are only good at consoling the body. <laughs> I honestly believe that there are more scientists pedophiles. Now, I'm not saying in the past. Yes, in the past, they, there were more priest pedophiles because there were more priests on the planet. But now the numbers change. Now there are more scientists on the planet. Hence, more scientists pedophiles. That's science. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. I know there are little things influencing the numbers. I think, I think one, of the, one of the factors influencing the pedophile numbers, uh, probably the pedophiles. <laughs> they don't live in the 70s, they're in the present now. They watch TV, they come to comedy shows. There's probably like one here among you tonight. <laughs> Chances are. I don't know, but probably yes. Still better than people working in finance. <laughs> Still believe that. So yeah, I think I think a big uh, I think a big uh, thing influencing probably the pedophile. You know, like, like if, if you're if you're a young pedophile, you're looking to fuck a kid. You're not gonna go to the Catholic church. <laughs> They're on the lookout for the children there. They don't have any more money for lawsuits. 
and the pedophiles are basically always gonna go wherever the parents trusted. It's a cat and mouse game. Parents used to trust priests. They used to trust uncles. <laughs> now they trust sires. <laughs> I'm just saying the children aren't safe there in the laboratory with all of those experiments. Okay, but basically what I'm saying, I really kind of hated the, the mandatory science. It's just, the children, it just feels dumb. You can't say, trust all science, because some scientists are pedophiles. It's just a stupid sentence from the get-go. I mean, like, we never shit on science enough. I really do. I really feel like that. Like, whenever, whenever there's a big fuck-up in the world, you know, like, when a, when a big company fucks up, and, like, a shit ton of people die, there's, like, a documentary every week now. <laughs> I'm gonna say the Boeing and the Procter and Gamble and the like Volkswagen. I like to use the Volkswagen because I do live in the UK and I, I, I shit on the British enough. But, but I, I do feel like the Germans, I don't know. <laughs> Somehow like 70 years later, still gassing humanity. <laughs> They're not stopping with taking life away from us. Well, there's a documentary kind of goes something like that. And then, there so many people died. And the company, they just got away with the fine. <laughs> the CEO, he never went to jail. I'm like, yes. And the scientist. <laughs> what are they working on the car? What the fuck? Do you guys think it was the CEO of Volkswagen fiddling with the car in the middle of the night? <laughs> Just waiting for 6 p.m. for the scientist to go home so he can play on the Volkswagen? <laughs> there are pedophile shitty scientists <laughs> on the planet, that's what I'm saying. I'm also gonna say this. I don't really know what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just talking shit. You guys know you came to like a comedy show, right? <laughs> but so it's, it's a weird thing. I like talking shit, but it, it's harder to do it. In 2023, it is hard that I've been doing comedy for a long time. In 2023, there's like a big shift happening in comedy. I'm going to be technical now, but I think you guys can follow. <laughs> and the big shift that's happening these days is that now uh, people are taking comedy seriously. <laughs> it's a huge. I don't really mind. I'm eh? fine, but what, what, I, what I mind about it, I feel like people aren't taking anything else in the world seriously. <laughs> Like politicians, nobody takes them seriously. They get to joke around all they want. Generalists, we don't take them seriously. But comedians... Oh my god, if you want to do a joke, you better have done the background reading. That's why I got into comedy, because I do want to do the background reading. I just like making jokes about pedophiles. I like, I like pedophile jokes, I like, I like any sort of joke where somebody gets hurt. <laughs> you know why? Because when I see somebody gets hurt, I don't really like it, and I need like a defense mechanism. And I kind of make a joke about it, that's what I find funny, right? just like, I don't know, like an old lady falling down the stairs, <laughs> like while having cancer joke. <laughs> that's just a funny thing to me, just the idea of an old lady falling, and, and that being the least of a problem. <laughs> That's how I get over the fact that the sad lady is falling. She's gonna die in another two minutes or two weeks. <laughs> Something bad is gonna happen and I don't really wanna feel bad. That's a defense mechanism. I, I feel like everybody has it. I don't, I don't think that anybody actually cares. Like about all the sad things in the world. You know that the blue hair people that kind of oh, I care about everything. <laughs> if you ask me, I think they're full of shit. I really don't think anybody exists that kind of really watches the news like every night. It really takes in everything that's happening on the news and then is still able to carry on with their lives. Who's watching like all the genocide story on the news and then making love with their wives? <laughs> Who's watching the genocide story and then getting a boner? <laughs> I think that's the sick people. The normal way to do it is watch the news story about the genocide. 
the info one, but after that make a joke about it, and then get the boner. Because at the end of the day, there is genocide that is going to happen in the world, and there is sex that needs to be had. We can't ruin our marriages because of the genocide on a different continent. That's how you get over it. I, I have been studying history for this particular joke. This is the big reveal about history. It's all genocide. Like if 30,000 people don't die, it doesn't make the book. You need a little defense mechanism. Works for me, by the way. I'm not saying that everybody should do it. Different people have different, different ways to, to deal with it. Like some people just use yoga. Good for them. They wake up in the morning, they go to a class at like 6 a.m. There's an instructor there, yells at everybody. Okay, everybody now, just breathe in fresh air and breathe out the genocide. <laughs> and breathe in more fresh air and breathe out more genocide. Bend over and try and fart some genocide away. That's basically what yoga is. It's just stretching and ignoring the Holocaust. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're pushing the muscles to the point that their brain can't think about the Holocaust anymore. And then the muscles get used to it and the following day they get to push them a bit more. Some people suck their own dick. Because of how much they don't want to think about the Holocaust. <laughs> you just find a hobby and stick with it. Because it's just hard to think about the Holocaust every time. It's honestly easier to try and suck your whole dick. I prefer to make a joke about the Holocaust. That's better for me. So I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna end by talking about uh, mental health. I think, uh, I think it's fair. I know we're, uh, we we're laughing and shit, but mental health is important. Are you guys like uh, uh, worried about your mental health? I think you should be worried. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know again. But like in Romania, uh, I wasn't worried because people don't talk about it. <laughs> Moved to the West, I started to worry. <laughs> I, I don't know if, if that's how it works, but honestly, like every time I hear about a new disease, I kind of feel like I have it. <laughs> like first time I heard about ADHD. Uh, like, oh my god, well, I find things boring all the time. <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, I thought school was boring. But apparently, no, school wasn't boring. I just didn't have the right pills to enjoy school. <laughs> School is incredibly interesting, but the chemistry in my brain, that was all wrong. <laughs> my brain wanted me to go outside and run around, but apparently it only wanted me to stay in and learn Excel. <laughs> Thank God for medicine, for making Excel more interesting. We can make a big spreadsheet with all the equipment for all the cycling gear we have. <laughs> So basically, uh, I know like mental health is important. I know there are like uh, very serious mental health illnesses out, out there, and also uh, a lot of r rich people uh, looking for a different way to complain. <laughs> right? They can both be true at the same time. It doesn't have to be one or the other, and it's definitely happening with mental health. I think it's the rich people that are like, taking the time to do that. <laughs> there are like two mental health diseases that kind of bother me. The the first one is uh, is dyslexia. I tell you, I don't like dyslexia. I feel like we should stop talking about it. <laughs> I know, I know that like, some people can't read, but I feel like just maybe make the alphabet a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> just maybe make the M look less like the N. <laughs> I think people are gonna read better if the L and the I are actually different letters. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen anybody spell Lily? It's like four sticks and a Y. <laughs> Yeah, that's hard to read, <laughs> but we haven't improved the alphabet in 400 years. <laughs> Why the fuck is the zero and the O the exact same symbol? 
I've been running up the symbol. Get the symbol from the Chinese. Come on, let's do something. Stop into the silent letters. Do we have French people in the room? Get the fuck out. What the fuck is with the silent letters? Yes, I know, all the letters are silent. That's, they're all imaginary in my head. You don't have to write half of them down. And let me decide which ones to pronounce and which ones to not pronounce. I really think that's like a shitty uh, French time to start here. <laughs> Writing a whole PhD, like a 90 page PhD about, oh my god, dyslexia is so horrible. <laughs> Take out all the letters you don't need, it's not gonna be as horrible. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, the main disease that I kind of want to talk about is uh, depression. I, I don't know if you guys can tell by my jokes. But, uh, I probably have it. <laughs> uh, there's a big chance that I'm depressed. I don't know, I haven't checked. It is expensive. <laughs> but, uh, I am napping enough, I'm claiming it. <laughs> I am, I am definitely depressed. And I'm gonna say this about my depression. I think it's fine. <laughs> I really do. I, I, I watch the news, the world is sad. I joke about some of it, some of it I can't joke about, and I'm just sad. I don't know where the fuck I'm wrong. I feel like I'm just a rational human being. Some stories you can laugh about, you're gonna laugh about the genocide, but some stories it's hard. <laughs> like, a, like a sad news story that's really in my head right now. Do you know, do you know the one about the, the planet that's going to die? <laughs> it's apparently gonna happen. Why is the planet die? Because of people doing too much stuff. What can we try? Do less stuff. I don't think we can get out of bed like it's 1999. You have Netflix? Stay the fuck there. I've honestly been thinking about it and I don't think that we need to fight depression. I kind of think that we need to encourage it. <laughs> it's our planet's last chance of survival. <laughs> That's how you save the planet, you lay low for 50 years. <laughs> Go back into lockdown. Be happy into lockdown. I don't know how the fuck I'm a, I'm a diseased person. I think I'm a progressive thinker. <laughs> I'm doing something with my life every time I don't get out of bed. <laughs> I am saving the planet one nap at a time. <laughs> just natural, like bears, they do it too. And when things get shitty, just hibernate. <laughs> I'm not a diseased person. I think, I think the active people, they're the sick ones. <laughs> they're the ones that didn't like lockdown. You know those people that just like going out all the time, that have a job and a hobby and a family? Every winter we go out skiing. I think that you should go to jail. <laughs> it's people like you fucking us over in the first place. How am I the diseased one? Just stand still. Prove to me that you can do that. I think a lot of people prove that they can't. Two years ago. And they need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> You can't be happy at home, you're just a sick person. <laughs> Stop bothering us all. <laughs> Ruining our, our lives. And our children's lives. And our children's future. I don't like children, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so I guess basically, everybody, what I'm uh, trying to say with, uh, with my whole show tonight is that uh, I just enjoy performing for you guys. <laughs> but uh, let's not let this happen ever again. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, I love you guys. I'm gonna go pee now. It's gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna go to the show. Oh my god, thank you. Oh, such a pleasure. Oh, great.